So in this video, we're going to switch gears a bit and talk more about hardware and some important limitations of the Tinkercad simulator in relation to what would happen in the real world with a physical Arduino. So you can see I have some very simple code here. I am just setting every pin in port D as an output and setting them all high. And I have a handful of LEDs connected here and I have them all in series with multimeters that are going to measure the current. I have one LED that is connected directly to the five volt rail with a one ohm resistor in series. I have an LED connected to an IO pin with a 220 ohm resistor and an LED connected to an IO pin with a one ohm resistor. So when I run this simulation, we will see what we saw in one of our much earlier videos. It gives a little icon showing that this LED would blow up because there is way too much current flowing through it. Our multimeter is measuring 415 milliamps, which is way more than a tiny little LED can handle. The one with the 220 ohm resistor is fine. That's lighting up normally. It's only getting 11.1 .1 milliamps. And it is showing this one with the one ohm resistor. It's not blowing up, but it has this little exclamation mark icon next to it. And Tinkercad is telling us we would get 52.6 milliamps through that LED. So it's kind of doing an okay job modeling what would happen with an LED, but this starts to fall apart if we add short circuits to other things that don't involve LEDs. For example, let's look at what happens if I had a short circuit directly between one of the I.O. pins and ground. Now, if we go looking around on the web or at data sheets for the Arduino or the Atmega 328P, we'll start seeing warnings like short circuits on Arduino pins or attempting to run high current devices from them can damage or destroy the output transistors in the pin or damage the entire chip. If we go to the specs for the Arduino Uno, we will see a suggested limit of 20 milliamps per IO pin. If we look at the data sheet for the Atmega 328P, we'll see that the absolute maximum rating is actually 40 milliamps per pin. So with a direct short circuit like that, we would probably expect to exceed that maximum rating of 40 milliamps. But if we run the simulation, you'll see that unlike with the LED, we don't really get any icons or warnings telling us that something bad would happen there. So here, in addition to this short circuit, I've added a multimeter connected directly between a pin and ground and set to measure current. So this is going to function like a short circuit. And if I run the simulation, you'll see that Tinkercad is actually allowing 100 milliamps to come out of this I.O. pin, but it's not simulating any damage. So you have to be careful with this because this is not an accurate representation of what would happen with a real Arduino, where if you tried this, you would be frying the individual I.O. pins. This is also relevant if you add a short circuit directly between power and ground. So if you've ever done this by accident in a lab, you certainly expect that if I add a little jumper wire there that something very bad would happen when I power my circuit on. But you can see it's still acting normally, the LEDs are lighting up, and it's not giving any indication of failure with this breadboard connection. So if I get rid of that wire and connect my multimeter again and run my simulation, set this to current, we'll see that it is actually allowing 25 kiloamps to flow between power and ground with no damage to the circuit. So clearly that is not realistic. You are not going to pump 25 kiloamps through an Arduino. So again, important reminder that in general, simulations have their limits. So there are some specific limitations to how Tinkercad is unrealistically allowing too much power to flow through the Arduino. If you tried this in the real world, you would fry your Arduino. So this becomes important when doing things like adding motors to the simulation. So in the real world, you would never drive a motor directly from an Arduino digital pin. You would use a transistor, which is what we're going to discuss in our next video. But the simulation will allow you to connect the motors to these pins and it will draw tens of milliamps to drive them. Whereas in reality, these might draw easily hundreds of milliamps for even a small DC motor. And again, you would never be able to do that directly from one of these pins. There is not a specific assignment for this lesson. What you can do is play around with motors and the multimeter feature, which we have not used before. So you can find these by going to components all, scrolling way down until you see the different types of motors and the multimeters available under instruments. And again, try to play around with creating various short circuits, seeing how much the simulator will let you draw for the current and compare that to the actual specs for what would fry an Arduino or an Atmega 328P.